Hey everybody, welcome back to Altium Academy. I am your host, Zach Peterson, and today we are gonna look at a really cool question that I received from Mario Strano, one of our recent podcast guests. Now, I don't normally get questions from podcast guests that end up turning into instructional videos. However, this one was definitely worth exploring because it's about teardrops on differential pairs leading into vias. It is, when should you use teardrops on differential pairs? So that's what we're gonna look at today. Let's get started. So there's a couple typical cases where we need to start worrying about teardrops placed on pads leading into differential vias. So normally, when we're dealing with high reliability products, such as a product that goes to class three, We'll have the via diameter here, and then we'll have the pad, which will be, let's say, D sub P. And for class three reliability, we generally have D plus 10 mils is the size of our pad. So if this is eight mils, this is 18 mils, and so on and so forth, until you get to a large enough via. Once the via gets very large, this minimal additional pad size that you're gonna have to have is gonna get larger. But Typically for designs where you're just dealing with smaller vias that need to operate at class three, this is gonna be just fine. So sometimes you will see certain guidelines out there or you will have manufacturers that require you to place a teardrop on this via. And so the reason you would place a teardrop on this via is of course to widen out the pad in this transition to the trace. And so the trace is back this way, of course. But the idea here is to create some additional copper here so that if the drill does stray too far over to this direction, it won't totally sever the trace and you will always have a reliable electrical connection to this pad and going into the via. Now this is especially important if we have a small trace coming in here. So let's say that this was an eight mil drill hole, but maybe this is a five mil trace. Now, of course, this trace being very thin, if this drill were to get too close to this trace, it is possible that this trace gets severed from the pad, and then of course you have an open circuit. So we'd like to prevent that ideally. So as I said, some fabricators, if you're working at class three, will just require you to do this, or they will recommend that you just do this in general. You don't have to have teardrops for reliability, but they are helpful. So the question for Mario is, what exactly does this do if you have teardrops on differential pairs? Now this is a bit of a complex problem because when we have a pair of traces that are driven differentially, we'll have some definite spacing between them, which I'll mark S. We generally have them as the same width. So this is W and this is W. And then they may be leading into a via pair that looks something like this. So what's gonna happen here in terms of impedance if I were to add in some teardrop on these traces. What's gonna happen is I'd have some additional copper that expands the width of this trace coming into the via hole. So remember, the characteristic impedance Z sub C, or Z sub zero in this case, is related to the width of this trace and the width is determined by the height above the substrate. As we then widen the trace in this region, well, if we have this width going up, then that means my characteristic impedance starts to go down. My characteristic impedance starts to get smaller in this region. Now here, if we have two of these vias driven differentially and they both have teardrops on them, well then what happens? Well now here, you have a reduced distance. So now the spacing between them is getting smaller in addition to the width of this trace getting larger. So when the width W goes up and the spacing between them goes down, the odd mode impedance also starts to decrease. So the odd mode impedance, Z sub odd, is already going to be less than the characteristic impedance. So not only does the characteristic impedance decrease, but the odd mode de impedance decreases even faster. So you don't just have a impedance discontinuity from just the teardrop. That impedance discontinuity is actually magnified because the odd mode impedance decreases even further. 
due to stronger electromagnetic coupling between these two traces. It magnifies the impedance discontinuity seen looking this direction into the teardrop. Now, the next question that you have to ask is, does this really matter? Well, the impedance discontinuity exists. That's a fact. It does exist. But the question you have to ask is, is this electrically long enough in order to cause any kind of significant reflection in your signals? That's the key here. Because if this teardrop is actually made very long, it has a easier time of creating reflections at lower frequencies. So if this teardrop is actually shorter, it's going to appear to be electrically shorter and you would then suppress reflections up to higher frequencies. When you're calculating the impedance of a pair of differential vias, as well as the impedance discontinuity created by these teardrops, then you have to use a bit more of a complex model in order to get that impedance and then ensure that you aren't degrading the signal quality by placing these teardrops here. Differential impedance models are a bit difficult. There aren't really any good analytical ones that you can just plug in some numbers into and then get some values. And that's especially true when you have these tapers here on these traces. So the other thing about these tapers is these are essentially like an RF taper. So if you're familiar with radio frequency design, tapers are designed to provide impedance matching between a high impedance interconnect or section of an interconnect and then a lower impedance section of an interconnect. However, this via could also have a higher impedance than the section of the trace right here seen looking in this direction. So now you have another impedance discontinuity that could arise if this via is not sized properly. So there's a lot of different parameters here at play. And because there are so many parameters at play that determine the S parameters and the potential for reflections looking into this pair of vias, it's best to use a simulation program to try and figure out what is the optimal size and spacing for these vias, whether we need the presence of any stitching vias around the sides, and what should be the taper length or the taper width or rate uh, coming into these differential vias in order to ensure that we suppress any reflections and maintain a consistent target impedance throughout this entire interconnect. So to investigate that, we're gonna jump onto Symbior. Symbior is a really great program for investigating this stuff because first of all, it's not very expensive, it's very highly accurate, and it is very specifically designed for simulating these types of structures. So let's go ahead and take a look. So what we wanna do now inside of Symbior is to create a differential via structure. So here we have a couple of differential pairs coming into this pair of vias. We're using just as an example, the six layer stack up. Now, of course, we could change that stack up if we want to, but just for fun, we're just gonna use this example six layer stack up. And we wanna see what happens when we start adding in teardrops on these different layers. So here in the inputs tab, you can see I have an option for teardrop widening. It's right here where my mouse is. And what I can do is if I start adding this in, we'll start to see how the teardrops increase in size. This is on the top layer, and then I can also do this on the bottom layer. So look at the graph on the right and see how it changes. So just as an example on this bottom layer, what happens if I were to say, take all of this off? Well, what you're seeing here is looking from the bottom layer going into the top, we see a change in the impedance compared to the top layer. So as I add in this teardrop widening, what you can see is the red curve is getting more similar to the purple curve it's actually moving up in terms of the impedance. And eventually you can see that the red curve overtakes the purple curve. And it's just very slight here. If I go ahead and move down this teardrop widening on the purple curve, then you can see the purple curve starts to move down. Adding in these teardrops is actually affecting the impedance seen looking from the bottom up to the top side. Now, the important point to note here is what? Well, first, what you can see is that the effect is really prominent at very high frequencies. And so that's really what's important here, is that these teardrops are actually very short. They're electrically short, and they're not really extending out very far onto the trace. So if you make these teardrops shorter, you're not gonna start noticing the impedance deviation until very high frequencies. And that's what's very important here. Of course, the pad stack for these individual vias, that matters as well. 
as well as the anti-pad. So if you were to start applying teardrops here, you could actually compensate for those teardrops by adjusting the via size, the via pad size, as well as the size and shape of this anti-pad region in these plane layers. So you've got multiple parameters that you could use to compensate for that impedance deviation in those teardrops. So make sure that you keep that in mind if you're gonna start playing with a tool like this. Just because you change one of these parameters doesn't mean that you can't fix it with one of these other parameters. We've got a great article in the description that outlines a bit more about the function of teardrops as tapers. So I encourage you to go read that to learn a bit more about what happens at radio frequencies when you're working with teardrops on a trace, and then to learn more also about how to use teardrops on differential pairs. That's all we got for today. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. You can keep up with all of our upcoming videos and the podcast. And then last but not least, don't forget to call your fabricator, folks. Yeah.